And politicians still would say, ah, let's, let's do some more. Let's do some more. Now, how can a country like Thailand manage this rice economy if you have five and a half million tons unsold that cannot be sold because you set it too high? You see, set prices way above the market. Now, that tells me politicians, when they believe in something, they use political instinct to manage the rice economy, not economic thinking. Eh? Mm -hmm. Dr. Moate, you, you are thinking economically, mm -hmm. but they do not. They use political instinct to manage. And when I say this, you can, you can think of what India going to do. You can think of what Philippines going to do, and maybe Indonesia going to do also. You see, politicians have power, eh? yes. and they use political instinct to direct them which way to do. Now, I said in Thailand, we are not likely to grow the rice economy because they are complacent. They do not invest in the research. They do not invest in infrastructure for irrigation. Without irrigation, without seed technology, you do. No way that you can become, continue to be the champion. Now, the, the research amount that they give, uh, allocate to the uh, Ministry of Agriculture is so small. I'm sure in the audience somebody who has come from Thailand, they may know. It's so small, it's, it's so bad that, that I, I say Thai government is unfair to, to Thai people. Because when you don't invest in research, when you do not expand irrigation, production cannot increase. The most is stabilized. And you know that we are the largest rice exporter with our yield in Thailand. It's the lowest. Yes. That's known uh, for decades. And move up very slowly. Yes. Not like in Vietnam. In a good year, 07, 08, yes. your total production went up 8%, 8 in a year. Yes. Can you believe that a country like Vietnam can increase 8% in a year? The year area improved nearly 3%, yield 4% something, so altogether about 8. <coughs> Thailand, we would never see that. Actually, the former Prime Minister Thaksin, mm -hmm. at one time, this is a uh, go back, I, I don't remember how many years now. I remember I was appointed to be the, uh, the president of the rice exporter mm -hmm. for the first time, and maybe the first few days I was invited to attend this meeting where Prime Minister Thaksin was sitting at the head table and he invited uh, two ministries, Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Commerce to come to the meeting and he said, you guys have done your whole work, what, what right policy do you recommend to me to do? And the Ministry of Agriculture said, let's reduce acreage for the second crop by a million rice. And the rationale was, if you reduce the rice acreage, the production will be small, price will go up. And then his secretary, who happened to sit next to me, you know, in front of me, said, could we try to you agree with that? Oh, they're not invited to speak today, I just come and listen. Just said, please come, please come and take my seat. So he asked me to come and take his seat, and then the prime minister looked up, up. There's an exporter here, let's just give him a chance to talk. So I talked. I said, if you want to cut acreage, don't cut the acreage for the second crop. Second crop is where we have irrigation, the yield is high. If you cut where we have high productivity, how could, how, how could we do that to our country? That's how we export from this the second crop. Mm -hmm. You have to cut somewhere where the yield is so low, where there is no irrigation. Now, Mr. Taksin then, he listened to me and he said, ah, 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 could we try as a point? You guys go do some more homework. Tell me where you want to reduce the acreage. Oh, and the Ministry of uh, Commerce said, sir, please announce it. Because we have deal with the uh, Vietnamese government. If we reduce our acreage, they will keep the price high and then we don't have to fight. Taxi said, you ask me to lie, I will not. Uh, he's a good man then. Uh, very good. And I felt so good. I said, ah, this prime minister is fine. Uh, 
but, but after that something happened, which I don't want to tell you. <laughs> so the thinking is not to expand production. The thinking is to somehow do whatever you have to do to get price for the farmer to be high. That's all it interested in. Because politically, mm -hmm. that's what you need to do to stay in office. Mm -hmm. Now, I tell you this much, and I'm pretty sure you agree that Thailand, if Thailand walk this way, do not invest in research, do not invest in irrigation, and besides, Jack, the exporter, the private sector. My thinking keeps switching back and forth. I'm thinking of India. I say, ah, poor Indian exporter. Their government say, no export. They invest so much in the facility, you know, rice milling and exporting facility. And the government say no. Say no since what? 07 until now. Just block like this. How do you think exporter will survive? Now, in Thailand, the Thai government do the same to us and say, we want higher price, we want higher prices for the paddy. You guys, you cannot export too bad, but at least they didn't close the door. They still open the door for us to continue. And our, actually, our export should increase one million tons every four to five years. Now, it's stabilized around eight million tons or so uh, for many years now. And I can see the sign. I see that. This, this is the end of the supremacy of, of Thailand as far as right export goes. That's my prediction. Okay. We have a new prime minister. Akun Apisik is our new prime minister. A very well-educated uh, man and a clean <laughs> politician. He came in and he looked and said, oh, the farmer want high prices and yet the mountain of rice stock is five and a half million tons. It's as big as Vietnam export in a year. So he said, got to do something different. And he came up with the income support instead. Help the farmer get higher income, you know, let's say per ton, you will get so much and so much, and allow the exporter to play with the demand and supply, price can move up and down. So that government stock will not go up and come up anymore. Uh, he did a very good job. Now, with this kind of policy, perhaps, perhaps, we can see some hope that <coughs> Thailand, will, Thailand will continue to prevail. But being a politician, uh, it's tough not, not to help the farmer get higher and higher price. Because there is a belief in Thailand that farmers are poor. And business folk like Kumbi Chai is rich. And they say, well, the fact that you're rich, that means that you have taken advantage of the poor somehow. Otherwise, majority of the farmer cannot be poor. And you, just a few business people, how come you are so rich? That's the thinking, and it's believed by the government, believed by the media. Uh, at one time, I got confronted with these uh, issues. The deputy prime minister had a conference like this, you know, I shared a panel, and, and he asked me, he said, Kun Chai, you have to be able to explain to me uh, that why you are so wealthy and the poor farmer is so poor. And then I could not answer him because I didn't know what the hell did I do wrong. I could not. Uh, until years later, again, the Chinese proverb helped me. The Chinese have another proverb, they say, if your investment is small, your margin is big, you are not wealthy. If your investment is big and margin is small, uh, you really make lots of money. Huh? They say that thousands of years ago, huh? it's an economy of scale that gives you the wealth. You know, Thai farmer will make, on the average, in the central plain, where we have good irrigation, they will make something like a 50% to 100% margin, profit margin. Can you imagine that 50% to 100% margin? Uh, cost of production is per ride, uh, which is about 4,000 4, baht. And they can sell in the market today over 8,000 baht, so that means 100% return. 
Time's up, sorry. Oh, <laughs> nobody warned me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought normally you would show me the sign on the top, on the, in the back. Like that, that's fine. I will end now. I'll end now. I said there's a misunderstanding on the concept of who is rich and who is poor. It's not the margin. We export and we make little margin, 2-3% margin. But we are rich because our volume is so huge. The largest exporter in Thailand can manage 1 million times. If you make 1%, it's $5 a day. Yeah? Put you $5 million a year, which is very good income. Farmer make 100%, but on the average, they have about 15 rise of, of land. Yeah? No matter what you do, you cannot be richer because the economy of scale is too small. That's what I want to leave with you, that the economy of scale is something explained who has money and who doesn't have money. It's not the magic. Yeah? Sorry, uh, no, 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 no,